I only ask because I don't know if I don't, if I'll never hear the end of it. Does this mean that you're, is this, is this it for you or is, is next year still a possibility? No, um, it, this doesn't mean that it's it for me. It's just uh, more of a, if it is it for me, I want to be able to go through with it. Okay. Jang, last one, you've been here a long time. What, what will you take away from this place um, after having, all you've been through? You know, I think there's obviously a lot of stuff to take away. Um, you know, being here for five years, you experience uh, a lot of big games, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. But I think just, you know, really what I'll take away is kind of the bond that I've formed with a lot of my teammates, both past and present, uh, you know, just in everything that we've gone through. And so I think that's the thing I'll take away from here the most. Parker, I think you coach said you hurt your ankle in the game. What's your status? Um, you know, a lot can change in 24 hours, but uh, we're trending in the right direction. We're working on it every day, and uh, you know, we're going to keep trying to ramp it up and hopefully be ready for the game. What is your uh, opinion of the speeches? What are you going to say? <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to save that for the moment. Um, no, no sneak peeks, but um, you know, just going to try to talk from the heart, speak from the heart. Very grateful for my opportunity here and, and uh, my time spent here. So. You know, hopefully it can, uh, I won't be too nervous, but um, yeah, just, just going to let everyone know, give thanks to everyone that deserves it, so that's kind of what I got planned. And for Hunter and Parker, both of you guys, do you, do you remember your first conversation with Coach Help um, and kind of what led you here, and same for you, do um, you guys remember kind of what that first conversation was like and, and how it went? Uh, yeah, well, my first conversation was actually in high school when he had cut me from the USA team, <laughs> so that was... That was my first conversation with him. Um, so yeah, mine was still a little different. Him. Yeah, mine was a little day. different. I wasn't expecting one from Coach Self, so um, it was more of a surprise for me, more of a, a grateful thing, and more of a, like a happy surprise than I'm, I'm sure it was Hunter. But um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad we both got us here at the same time. So, Jake, what's it been like for you, kind of seeing your role? as a walk-on change over the years and become kind of a leader of that group? Yeah, I think that kind of just goes along with the experience, you know, especially with the amount of turnover that we've had the last couple of years. Uh, we've always had new guys coming in, uh, cycling through. And so I think just my experience has led me to, you know, kind of just become a natural leader just because, you know, I know what's kind of expected here. And I think just kind of carrying the new guys along and trying to, you know, get them up to that standard. Jake and Parker have a, a little about a minute left. Uh, what do you, what do you guys all think of the K State rematch? It was a pretty emotional game in Manhattan, and they they got you that night. What do you think of the rematch, Hunter? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I'll speak on it. You know, uh, we never like losing there, and so I think it's a really great opportunity for us, especially on Senior Night. You know, to kind of get that revenge. And so I'm really looking forward to it personally. I know these guys are as well. Uh, just, you know, getting that revenge because obviously, you know, it's a big rivalry in college basketball. And so, you know, it's when we kind of need to get back. Jenk, you've been here a long time, like you mentioned, and there's been a lot of times where the fan base is like, throw Jenk out there. Why doesn't he get to play more? He shoots it well. What's that been like for you to hear? Uh, you know, it's been very special, obviously, getting the support of the fans. Um, and, you know, Tomorrow night, I'll be able to get my first start. So I think that's going to be a great experience. Uh, you know, hopefully some of those fans that have voiced their opinion will, you know, <laughs> you know, get that, you know, get that support. All right, you too. Parker and Jake. Appreciate you guys. Nice Appreciate it. You did say you, you were going to get a with Hunter. Right? <laughs> a couple we'll more questions for it. Hunter. Hunter, while they're walking out, what, what can you say about those two guys and your year as a teammate with them? Um, it's been a ton of fun, um, you know, Transferring, coming in from a new school, um, meeting a whole new group of guys. Uh, it's been really fun. Like, uh, it's been better than I could have ever imagined. Um, you know, hanging out with a new group of guys, just the way we bonded, the way we gelled um, off the court has been super fun. It's always, you know, a pleasure hanging out with guys, whether it's you know just like in the hotel uh, meeting room or just you know in the locker room after practice, before practice, stuff like that. Um, you know, those two guys, but just the whole team in general. It's been it's been a ton of fun um, just being around them. Hunter, I read a stat that for the first time, I think since 2020, Kansas is in the top 10. Um, I guess maybe by Kansas standards, it hasn't gone the way maybe a lot of people envision. And now you've reached kind of a point of the season where if you lose, you go home. What, what's, the, what's, what's the key moving forward for you guys? How do you take it just one game at a time? And what's the, 
as you approach. Now that you guys maybe look to be getting healthy. I know, yeah, and I saw that. I was like, I was like, damn. Once I got here, things just kind of went to crap. Uh, um, I think the mentality that you know we've kind of had, especially after the Baylor game, was kind of just like you know we just got to get ready uh, for March because um, you know obviously we, I don't think we can probably or statistically or have any chance of winning the Big 12. Uh, we can still win the Big 12 tournament. But um, I think, you know, the NCAA tournament is the goal of every team in college basketball when the year starts. And um, you don't need to be a one seed or a two seed to win it. I think UConn proved that last year when they were a four seed and they just got hot at the right time. Uh, they were a team that had, you know, if not the most talent, one of the most talented rosters in the country. And they had, I remember because I had my podcast, so I was talking about college basketball and I was talking about them back in like, I think it was November or December and how they had, you know, some hiccups and some, some down stretches where, you know, teams or people around the country were kind of like, you know, like what happened to UConn? Like they were a preseason um, top team and they kind of just fall, they, they fell off a little bit, what happened? But, um, you know, that talent kind of rose to the top eventually and when it came uh, time to where, you know, the games really mattered and, um, you know, one loss and you go home, uh, they were able to string out six in a row, and I think, um, you know, that's that's something that this team is very capable of. And did, sorry, does this team have that confidence? I mean, do you, in the locker room, you see it every day. Um, I, I kind of gained some more confidence today because um, I was going on Twitter and I saw somebody compare us to the Chiefs, and I was going through the comparisons. I think they compared Furphy to Rasheed Rice. If, if I do, I will say I'm not the biggest Chiefs fan, Bills Mafia, but. Um, oh. <laughs> I know, yeah. It, it, it does hurt being here, um, seeing the Chiefs win. They, they luckily, um, thankfully, humbly compared me to Mahomes, which I appreciate. Um, but then, like you know, they just said how um, they were, you know, they had a little rough stretch during the regular season, and um, when it came time, when it mattered the most, uh, they were able to pull off, you know, a, a, a streak of I think four wins, maybe five wins in a row in the playoffs, and um, now they're, n nobody cares about what they did in the regular season. They're, they're Super Bowl champs, and so I saw that today, and that kind of inspired me a little bit. Craig, you talked about your experience working with Coach Shelf as a high school guy. How different is he then compared to now when you get to work with him every day compared to just a short spurt? Um, it, w it, w it was pretty cool because I was in high school still um, learning from Coach Self because he was a college coach, and I was playing with a couple of college players, and so just getting a feel for kind of how college practices are run and kind of the speed and everything like that was really fun for me just to experience. And then um, getting here, I think it was, I think it was great getting here as a senior because I had already had a lot of experience in college. And so I feel like I wasn't really easily rattled or I feel like I'd, I'd seen and, and, and heard a lot from, from people, especially in terms of, you know, how they coach and stuff like that. So I think that was great for me because I came here kind of already seasoned and, you know, well adept to, uh, handle Coach Self's coaching uh, style. Because of the name on the front of your jersey, you'll, uh, Kansas will never be essentially a, an underdog, but there'll be a few people not counting and, and counting us out uh, and, and maybe a lower seed in the tournament. Does that give you an edge and is that something that you think this team will rise to and particularly yourself uh, and having that edge you need to bring out the best? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like that can, uh, I think a lot of people do kind of like hope to be the underdog in a way because that kind of gives them like that extra motivation. I feel like for me, during my basketball career, there's been a there's been a few times where I actually have been considered the underdog, like in like relative games and stuff like that. Um, uh, so I th I do think that could add like a chip to our sh to our shoulder per se. But at the end of the day, we are our we are Kansas and. I think everybody realized that when they play us. I think, you know, definitely the three-point shooters realize that when they play us. But um, uh, I think that will always bring out the best in other teams. But at the end of the day, we're Kansas. We have a standard of excellence here that we have to uphold. And, and I think we're going to try to do that uh, moving forward. Hunter, can I ask, uh, uh, what's been the tone that Coach Self has brought to the team for the troubles of the last, you know, not winning? You know, with the losses, and, and now you need to look ahead to March. What sort of tone has he brought to you in this communication? 
Yeah, um, you know, after the loss to Baylor, he was he was relatively calm because uh, you know he he thought we had played pretty well um, in that game, and um, he said something really interesting. He was like, um, you know, losing at Baylor isn't you know the end of the world. It wasn't like a make or break for our season. Um, that losing to Baylor wasn't the reason why we aren't going to win the Big Twelve. Um, you know, losing games at West Virginia, at UCF, at Kansas State, um, at home versus BYU. Those are the games where you kind of lose uh, the Big 12 regular season. Um, you know, games like BYU ha or games like Baylor happen where, you know, you play good, but you're on the road playing a team that's also playing pretty good. And, um, you know, if a team's playing at home, it's always statistically harder to beat them. And so uh, games like that happen, you know, those are kind of to be assumed. Um, but uh, I think it was kind of encouraging to see, you know, us play pretty well at full strength, even though we didn't win. Um, and I think the good part about all of this is, I think one thing that Coach Self <laughs> said that will benefit us um, in the March Madness tournament is that there, there are no away games in the March Madness tournament. Um, I think that'll benefit us greatly because, uh, record speaking, I feel like uh, you take out those away games, we're pretty good. All right, you said this team is uh, capable of winning six in a row come March. Do you feel like this team is built for a run in March versus the long kind of haul of uh, you know, conference play? Um, yeah, I think you know when it comes time to March, you don't really have to worry about resting your players, um, getting beat down by a hard Big 12 <clears throat> grueling schedule. I think you know you usually play your 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 best five to around eight and. Um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna really rely on those guys to get you through games because you only got to win two games and then you get a nice little break before your next game. And I think that's why the Big 12 is is so nice because it really prepares you for that. Um, in the Big 10, we didn't really have that. We had a more of like a structured schedule, um, and so um, I think playing in the Big 12 would definitely help with that. Playing on Saturday, Monday, um, and so um, I do think this team is built for it. We have the talent, we have the skill, obviously we have the coaching, and I think you know we have that fan base that'll definitely help us um, where, wherever we, we, we land. Yeah, after the K-State loss over there, you, you, you know, clearly upset, and I think you said, I gotta do more for my team. Uh, I'm sure you remember that. What, what would your assessment be of that since then to today, and, and maybe could you point out some ways that, that you've delivered on that and you feel good about that? Um, I think in, in spurts I have, um, I think I can say I've probably been a little inconsistent um, with that. Uh, just trying to be that release for us offensively, and then just trying to be more of a, a presence in the paint defensively. Um, and I think um, in terms of my ball screen defense, I feel like I've, I've made big strides in that area, and that's something that um, coming into the season I really wanted to work on and improve and showcase, and I think I've been able to do that thus far. And so that's been um, something that uh, I've been really happy with but just continuing to try to rebound, defend, and um, you know make shots when, when, when I'm needed out there. Does, does that memory, um, how you felt when you said that over there after that loss, is that something that stuck with you, it, especially since they're the next opponent? Are you kind of taken back to there and moved all the way on? Uh, I would say more, more in like the actual plays that I kind of let my team down that I remember more than that statement. I feel like the, indi the individual plays that I made or didn't make um, in the situations at, um, during the game, I feel like they still stick out to me and things that I wish I could take back. All right, huh? Hey, thanks, Hunter. Thanks, thanks guys.